Welcome to Apple One to One. This is Frank. In today's video, I want to show how we can track a auto loan. And there are several methods, but this is just one interpretation of that. This is what I want to end up with. Well, how did I get there? The first thing I did was, as you can see, I have multiple tables. I have a summary table, which is just two columns. And um, I put in the vehicle that I'm that I want to purchase, the total amount financed, the amount paid, which is well, I'll show you how that's going to be filled in automatically, and the remaining balance. So in our first table, we have four columns and 21 rows. So how do you how do you do that, right? You're going to click on table, add a table, and then you're going to position it wherever you like. And you, the number of columns you want to add, you can slide it out to the right or to the left to remove columns. And then just over here on this equal sign, slide down to the number of rows that you want to add. That's all you do. And then you can place it anywhere you want. So what I've done over here on this first table is, if you click on it, you can see we have four columns and I have 21 rows. What I did was I put in the list price of the vehicle, the interest rate for 72 months is 5.49%. The total number of uh, total interest for 72 months calculates out to 3895. Now, let me, what I want to show you here, let's increase this a little bit. So, what all this is, this this amount here is just B2, which is the full list price, times C2, 5.49. That's going to give us our total interest paid over the course of the loan. The next row is the total cost including interest. That is just an equal sum of B2 and B3. This is the down payment, of course. You can put in whatever it is you feel you, you, you can afford on a down payment. In this case, in our example, I'm putting 5000 down. The total financed is B4 minus B5. That's going to give us our total. In this column, I entitled this year one, and I put cost per month, the due date, and I put a, just a checkbox to pay. This is just a reminder for me that I paid it. You don't have to do that. It's just something I like to do in various lists, I like the checkbox. So, 97029 in this first one, what that is, is a formula B6 divided by 72. That gives us our monthly payment. Now, just to let you know, when we get to the end of this and we populate all of these and we come up with a zero, it's going to come up with a 10 cent variance, and that's because of the uh, percent. When you calculate divided by 72 months, it's, it's going to give us a, a 10 cent difference. So, but I didn't think it was anything to uh, worry about here. So then what I did was in here, I had monthly payment number one. And then down here, I went two and three. And you can, as we've noted before, you do two, three, and then you see that yellow, little yellow dot. You just drag down on that all the way down, and that will populate those sequential numbers. So you're going to get 2 through 12. And, and what I did here, you in this field, you format this as a date. If you look over here on the right, you see cell, and you see it says date and time. So here's our date format, month, day, and year. In time, 
if if you wanted to have an actual you know notation of the time of day you could do that i've selected none so that when you populate this it's only going to give you the month day and year i put in the first one and the second one then highlighted those two dragged it down with that yellow dot again and it will automatically populate them at one month intervals and as you can see over here in year two it will move to the next year what i did was after i did this first one then i said a, a year to date total this year to date total is nothing more than b8 through b19 that's our sum that's an equal sum b8 through b19 that's how I set up the first table. Year two, all I did there was I created a table, or I should say I added a table. Four columns, A, B, C, and D, 15 rows. So let's, let's go over here and we'll do that. Add a table, and I'll just position it down here. Click on that little circle, drag it down wherever you want. And you see I have four columns, A, B, C, and D. Click on this little equal, take it in, and you only have that. Now I added, check here, 15 rows. Click on this table. We have 10 rows now. We want to go down to 15. But you can add more and you can remove them later. Then what I did was, um, let's say if we wanted this to be year seven, I labeled this year seven or whatever year you want. Okay, so year seven would start with month 73, 74. Then what I did was highlight them. And you see the yellow so now we took this loan out for an additional seven years. Now you have through month 84. Then you can, if you do what I did here, one blank line, you can come up to the table above it, highlight the headings, Command C, come down here, highlight those four columns, Command V, over to our year to date total one over command c come down one over command v all right now just to show you our date so here this is going to be 8 14 29 now Let's just look. See, the date format, the format, if you notice here, is automatic. We don't want that. We want it to be date and time. Click on date and time. There's our format, 1523, none. You can, if you want to change the format, you can. There are all the different selections you can choose from. So there you are. But we're, we're going to stick with that. Then, if I now if I move this down now it, you notice it's going to go to 815 I don't want it to be 815 I want it to be 914 so you you need to do 229 okay then highlight those two and then it will tell the system that you want them in one month increments you see that then you can if you want come up here well I want to uncheck that but I want to highlight the column command C come down command V now you have your logical field your your checkbox and you can size these as you see fit and I try to keep them even with the others. You can see how the lines, how they line up. 
You can also, when you move the table, you'll see your yellow lines to keep things in sync. That's how I created each of those years. It's just that simple. After I created those tables, each of these tables has a year to date total. So what I did was up here, this is our total payment, 69,860.98, which this number is derived from the total financed. The amount paid to date, that is, if we look at the formula, that is this cell, year two, this cell, and so on and so forth. So it's taking each of these totals and giving us a total in our summary table. This is merely our starting figure, our year-to-date paid amount, minus, minus from that gives us our remaining balance. There's various things you can do with this. If you want it all on one spreadsheet or all on one table like I have here, you can do that. If you want it all on one sequential spreadsheet here, you can drag this down and put in 72 months in sequence. I chose to do it this way so it's more compact and you can see it on one page. You could do it in multiple sheets. So if you if you wanted to see the summary by itself, you could put your summary here and then you see this is this formula is going to you would just equal sum and then go back to your detail table and click on each one in sequence of course and it will populate that number for you in a separate tab just depends on the look you want to get the other thing that i did was i put in a picture of the car i was purchasing i only did that so that it's pretty large amount and you know you're like oh man i can't wait to get this thing paid off at least you have a picture of what it is you invested in and you know might give you some inspiration to continue on also since this first figure is a calculation you just can't copy it down in month two you would key in that amount 970.29 Okay, and then check that off and notice how this changed. Subsequent months, you can just highlight it and drag it down. All right, and you see how you have 11,643.48 for the year, and you see how it's taking that 11,000 and subtracting that 11,000 from the 69, giving you the 58. You can also just to show you um, the total result. Okay, now you can, I'll just do this for quickly to fill this in. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> I just copy and paste, pasted all of these in just to show you. You see, you have the eleven, the exact same amount each year calculated, and here you're going to end up with a remaining balance of ten cents. That's just because of the how the fractions carry out. But ten cents, I'm sure you you once you see that. Um, I would always recommend that you calculate this all out so that you come to the zero and in one of your payments you just throw in that extra 10 cent and you're good to go. This is one way of tracking a loan each month. Just keep in mind that here I did a very simple calculation of the total cost times the interest rate to come up with the total amount. Now, from a car dealer, it may vary different uh, a little. So I would urge you to find out from your auto dealer how much your monthly payment is and then use that as your basis and then you could come through and track it each month. 
Well, I hope this was helpful. And uh, if you have any comments, please send them on. Thank you very much. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for viewing our content. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe so you can see all our training videos as well as links to download our podcast.